is set to tip this one away. And it is controlled by Utah State. By the way, the game against LMU was the first game all year. Utah State had not won the opening tip. Max Shulga swings it to Bearstow. Bearstow on the right side, comes around a screen, gets into the lane. His shot blocked in the lane, and the ball tipped around and controlled by who? It'll stay with Utah State. And again, Bearstow, you'll get a few of those when he attacks the lane like that. Tough twos. Tough twos, and... Uh... Got his shot blocked, probably a little surprised that uh, guy guarding him, uh, Avila, is, is a little shorter, so I think Sean thought he could Debo him, but he wasn't able to. Starting lineup for Westminster, number three, Taylor Miller. He is the cousin of Brock Miller. Uh, Denalov Avila is uh, number 10. We'll get to start in that game. Drake Middleton, number 12. Number 21, Trey Farr. And uh, Pierce Sterling, number 24. Uh, Trey Farr, by the way, an interesting player. He started at Snow, then went to UVU, now at Westminster. Um, he's a really, really good player, averaging 18 points a game. Bearstow in the lane again, finally leaves it back to Shulga, who then gives it to Ashworth. Ashworth controlling the ball, three seconds on the shot clock. Shulga takes the long three, misses off the back of the iron. Atkin could not pull down the rebound, and here comes Westminster. Avila on the right wing, swings it cross court to Middleton, working it around to Taylor Miller. 20 seconds on the shot clock. First offensive possession for the Griffins. Finally, the dump down to Avila at the free throw line. Works it left, then right, and the shot is up and missed as Middleton couldn't get the bucket to fall. And here comes Utah State in transition. Bearstow back to Akin to Shulga. Akin starting his first game. The bounce pass in the lane nearly stolen away, but finally controlled back by Utah State. shulga has got a wide open baseline three. Missed, there's Dorius for the layup. It's missed, and he misses another put back, and here comes Westminster away from it. Two good opportunities for Trevin Dorius. Couldn't get either one to go. Controlling the paint, but just not able to finish. Pierce Sterling leaves it left to Taylor Miller. Miller then trying to get it to number 12, Middleton, posting up against Akin. Puts his shoulder down, spins right, and will travel with it. And by the way, that's Trey Farr, not number 12, Middleton. Farr with the turnover. And is he expecting games like this coming out a little ragged on both sides? Yeah, they are. They're coming out a little flat, I think Utah State, both times getting in the paint, expecting being able to uh, control that and Debo him, and Westminster putting up a little bit of a fight. Aggie's already 0 for 5 shooting in this game because of offensive rebounds that just haven't gone. Ashworth leaves it for Bearstow. Tries to sprint into the lane, then leaves it back for Ashworth on the right wing. Post up to Akin on the right baseline. Akin gets into the lane. His has the ball deflected away from him. It's down on the court, and it'll be a jump ball, and it'll go back to Westminster. Now, remember, this is starting lineup that Utah State has not gone to and has not really had this combination much with no Taylor Funk, who's out with an ankle injury. The Aggies are starting Dan Akin, his first start of the year, and he's coming in at four, and Dorius is at five. So, again, players that really aren't used to uh, putting together that combination and trying to make it work. Well, sure. and, 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 and one shooter can change a lot. Taylor Miller leaves it right to Farr. Farr is unable to get the floater to go. Utah State quickly down the court. Akin now on the left wing, up top to Ashworth. Ashworth drives, gets to the free throw line, swings it back to Bearstow. Wide open three, yes! Sean Bearstow had not made a three since the first game of the year against UVU, but he's able to get one and give the Aggies their first lead of the game at 3-0. Cross court to Middleton. Middleton then looking for Sterling. Sterling gets to the left elbow, then puts his foot on the gas, drives, and misses the layup. Good look. Just couldn't get it to go for him. Shulga now on the right wing, quickly in transition to Ashworth, back to Shulga. Shulga lost the handle, leaves it back to Ashworth, and Ashworth will retreat and try to reset things. 18 seconds on the shot clock. Bearstow has just hit a three, is going to spin in the lane. Pump fake, back to Shulga. Shulga for three, yes. Aggies out to an early 6-0 lead. Shulga missed a couple but didn't hesitate there. It's good to see that confidence. Sterling. Swings it left to Middleton. Westminster yet to score in this game as we're three and a half minutes in. Aggies up 6-0. Sterling driving, shot missed, rebound, fought for, and controlled by Westminster. Baseline three is up and good by Taylor Miller, 6'2", 175-pound senior from Las Vegas. Again, started his career at BYU, 
then went to Snow and now playing for Westminster. Sean Bearstow, yo-yo dribble outside the three-point line. He's going to launch another three and bury it. Made his first two of the year, then missed his next nine, and then just hit another, his last two. Hey, why not? Why he's not? up nine to three. Sterling hands over to number 10, Avila. He gets into the lane. He's cut off. Has to give it back to Middleton. Aggie defense really starting to flex here. But Miller drives in the lane, layup, and gets it to go. He's a good player. He is a good player. I actually recruited him a little bit, never offered him a scholarship when I was coaching, but capable of playing. And, and he's very aware Utah State's offered his little brother. Um, so I'm sure he's going to come out and say, hey, you got the wrong Miller. In an exhibition game against BYU, he had 16. Drop off to Akin, Akin to Dorius, and Dorius lost the handle on the way up. And the ball will go back to Westminster. Nine to five, our score, 15-23 left here in a ragged start to this game. Utah State with an early four-point lead on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield. Five, our score, Utah State leads by four. The Utah State Athletics and America First Credit Union featuring the academic success of USU student athletes this week. The America First Credit Union Student Athlete of the Week. How about Sean Bairstow from the men's basketball team? Congratulations to him. All right, Utah State, thanks to the three ball, Sean Bairstow, two of three. Max Shulgit just hit a three. And the Aggies lead nine to five, only five points for Westminster, coming from Taylor Miller. Came into this game averaging 10.4 points per game. Uh, he actually had a real struggle from the three-point line. He was four of 20 from three coming into this game. Yeah, you look at the whole Westminster team, even like Dowdell off the bench. They, they've got kids that at least that I've known, the ones that I know have been able to shoot the ball but haven't shot it well this year. So I know they're capable of doing that, but uh, I, it, I think that's why their record is what it is because they haven't been able to shoot it like they should. I'm sure Norm is, is waiting for that to happen once they get into their conference play. Aggies will inbound underneath their own basket. 15-23 left in the half. With the Aggies leading 9-5. Sean Bairstow leaves it to Shulga. Wide open for three. Rattles out. Did everything but drop and Bairstow reaching over the top of, Tra of Taylor Miller and uh, gets hit with a foul. First team foul for the Aggies. And here comes Westminster, bringing the ball down the court. Pierce Sterling, picked up in midcourt by Shulga, works to the right side, then hands back to Middleton. Middleton then cross court to Jeremy Dowdell, who's now into the game. Dowdell, an interesting player, a former teammate of Ryland Jones. Talk more about him here in a bit. Farr trying to post up against Dorius and lost the handle on the way up on the shot attempt. Dorius is going to want a block shot. Shulga, er, Ashworth for three, buries it on the right wing. So all points coming from the three-point line. Aggies up 12-5. Aggies now four of seven from three. Yeah, it goes back to my key to the game of points in the paint, remember? Yep. <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> Dowdell pump fakes the three, drives, leaves it to Miller, who lays it up and in. And Miller's got all seven of Westminster's points. Aggies up 12 to 7. Good ball moving there. Dowdell, by the way, 
I don't know if this record still stands, but when he wrapped up his career at Olympus, he had 307 made threes, a Utah State record. Down yeah. low, pass to Akin, who lays it up and in. Yeah, Dowdell can really shoot it in high school. He wasn't hesitate. To, uh, he wouldn't hesitate to pull up from the logo or anywhere. Offensive foul on the screen is going to go against Sterling, and here comes Shimon Zapala into the game. Shimon has not played. You have to go all the way back to the Santa Clara game. Last time he's played, he's played in only two games this year. But Zapala going to get some run here. 6'11", 240-pound junior. Obviously, these are great opportunity games for other guys to get minutes, to get some experience, and, and Zapala getting some early minutes uh, with Funk that taking away one of the big men. He's going to fill that. Ashworth, the Idle Rock, who's also into the game to Bearstow. We'll give you your lineup of Aggies here in a moment. Bearstow comes around the screen, floater with the right hand, up and in. Beautiful shot. And Sean Bearstow, who had four, who's had 12 and 14 in his last two games, now has eight. Six and a half minutes into this game. Taylor Miller on the right side. Ashworth's got a hand in his face. Tries to cross him over, gets into lane. Nice bounce pass, but it's deflected away and will go out of bounds. It'll stay with Wes Widster, trying to leave it for Lewis Johnson, and if he's able to collect, he's got an easy bucket. Yeah, good play, good drop-off pass. Uh, you know, you mentioned in the in our uh, conversation before the game how important confidence is. That You can just tell by the way Sean is carrying himself how good that road trip was, get a little success. He's got a lot more confidence, this, you know, tonight than I've seen before. Got a Gucci into the game, number 11. And one thing about Westminster, they'll go deep. They'll go 11, 12 men deep. And how about that? Taylor Miller hits the bucket. It's a long two. He's got all nine of Westminster's points. Trying to throw the alley-oop to Shimon Zapala. He's fouled on the way up. He'll have some free throws coming up. But you're right. Taylor Miller trying to make a uh, name for himself here in the spectrum. He's playing extremely well. Talented kid. I remember watching him Palo Verde High School in Vegas. Uh, he, he was actually on his mission, and his dad approached me, watched some video of him. Incredible athlete, but he's shooting it well tonight as well. No free throws for Zapala. They were uh, fouled before the shot. Bearstow under his own bucket, looking to clear it all the way up top to Idle Rock. R.J. Idle Rock guarded closely by Lewis Johnson, crosses him over, gets to the free throw line, retreats, then tries the other side. Swings a cross court to Bearstow. Bearstow, oh, an offensive foul down low, and I think that's going to go against Apollo. Action away from the ball. Offensive foul goes against Utah State. 16-9 our score. Aggies have made their last three field goals. Westminster four out of their last five from Taylor Miller, who's four for four from the field, one for one from three. He's got nine points, one rebound. Lewis Johnson kicks it to Dowdell. Then to Taylor Miller. Comes around the screen, gets the elbow, driving, reverse layup, up and good. <laughs> he's, he's playing with a ton of confidence yeah, right now. Yeah, he is. And it's fun. He, 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 like I said, they've offered his little brother. He's talented enough that he can do this. Ashworth for three off the back of the iron. And it will stay with Utah State. Zapala fought for it, but they're going to say it goes off the hands of Gabriel Oliveira. Ashworth's going to take a breather. As the Aggies lead 16 to 11. Miller asked for a, to, a sub to come out, and then he thought about it for a second and was like, no, I'm good, but the guy had already come to the uh, scores table. Shulge gets a screen, then Zapala flashes to the basket. They try to slip it to him, but a bad pass again deflected away. 16 to 11, Aggies getting hit with the turnovers here a bit. Already three to start this game. Working the left side, dishing, handing, and driving into the lane. Shot missed and missed badly. It'll go out of bounds off of who? Yep, it's off of Westminster. Kataguchi unable to get the shot to go, and the Aggies lead by five, and they'll try to extend this lead on this possession. Aggies on the court right now. Idle Rock, Akin, Shimon Zapala, Max Shulga, and Z Hamoda. I can guarantee you with a 1,000% of surety, this lineup has not been together on the court this year. Yeah. Max Shulga to Zapala. Shulga swings across court to Hamoda. Hamoda with 12 seconds driving back to Shulga. Wide open three. No good. 
One-handed rebound, well done by Zapala. Leaves it for Idle Rock for three. That will not go. And the Aggies not shooting the ball well to start this game. Now four of 10 from beyond the three-point line, six of 15 overall. Dowdell on the right side for Westminster. Down by five to the elbow. Floater with the right hand up and no good. Rebound bot down by Shulga. Shulga outlets it quickly to Hamoda. Hamoda working the right side of the court. Gets a screen from Zapala. Takes the long two and won't go. And tipped out of bounds. I believe that will be, yep, Westminster ball when we come back. 11.09 left here in the first half. Aggies let Westminster kind of hang around in this game. Lead by five, 16 to 11. You're listening to Aggie Basketball from Learfield. Can't choose between watching your favorite Mountain West team on TV or going everywhere else you need to be? With the official Mountain West app, you don't have to. Watch hundreds of Mountain West games and championship events, live or archived, from wherever you are, all for free with the Mountain West app. Available on mobile and connected TV devices. Download the Mountain West app today. nine left here in the first half. Utah State leads Westminster 16 to 11. Do you own or rent your home? Sure you do. Fortunately, Geico makes it easy to bundle your home and car insurance. It's a good thing, too, because having a home is hard work. Go to Geico.com, get a quote, and see how much you can save. Geico.com, easy. Well, it hasn't been easy for Utah State. You've got Taylor Miller, who's got all 11 points for Westminster. Utah State. He's had one, two, three players score, including eight from Sean Bearstow. But it's kind of fun when you see a young man get a lot of confidence, and he's been shooting the ball really well for Westminster. Yeah, shot it well, drove to the rim, a couple creative finishes. You know, going back to the keys to the game, right now Westminster has more points in the paint than Utah State. That's why they're sticking around. Utah State doing an okay job of taking care of the basketball, but they need to tighten up a little bit. Got a Gucci. Leaves it for Middleton. Middleton then hands over to Farr. Barr still controlling the ball. Needs to hand it to somebody. Gets it to Lewis Johnson outside the three-point line. Then back to Dowdell. He's not taking a shot attempt yet. Leaves it left. Long three is up and good. So finally, somebody not named. Taylor Miller is on the board. And it's Cole Kataguchi. Shulga gets a screen. Works to the middle of the court. Swings it back to Bearstow. Back to Shulga. Shulga driving. Underhand layup attempt is blocked, but a foul, and that'll send Shulga to the line. Aggies only lead by two, 16 to 14. Largest lead in this game for Utah State was at nine when they led 16 to seven. But since then, you've got Westminster on a 7-0 run. No free throws, excuse me. Ball will be inbounded underneath. Westminster going zone off of the inbounds yeah. play, going a 2-3. Hamoda gets around his man, driving, right hand floater up and in. Beautiful layup, Z Hamoda's on the board. Four Aggies have scored in this game. And you can see the athleticism of Utah State's gonna be a problem for Westminster. Yeah. Farr leaves it to Johnson. Johnson takes the shot, misses it, and rebound off of the hands of Bearstow. Goes back to Hamoda, back to Bearstow. Pump fakes the three, leaves it back for Hamoda. He'll take the right wing three, and no good. And Shimon Zapala tries to keep it in play, he cannot. Ball goes out of bounds, it'll stay, or go back to Westminster. 18 to 14, four point lead for Utah State. Shimon, you see him, and that's one difference between Shimon and Trevin is he's chasing the ball just with one arm, and that's, Trev is a great two-handed rebounder, and that's yeah. something that Shimon needs to work at. Don't just tip it around with one hand. By the way, Taylor Miller into the game. He's got 11 points. Straight away, or Dowdle, pump fakes the shot, then his shot off the glass is good. Driving, kiss off the glass, back to a two-point game, 18 to 16. Shulga working the right side of the court, guarded by Miller. Trips a bit, finally gets it to Idle Rock. 
18 seconds on the shot clock. Idle Rock controlling the dribble. Leads it for Zapala, then to Shulga. Shulga for three. Yes, there we go. Utah State, Ben in a, had missed their last four three-point shot attempts, hits that one, and pushes the lead back to five, 21-16. Dowdell just had a layup. Looks at the three, instead rotates it left. Farr driving, averaging 18 a game, and draws the foul on Zapala. And Farr is going to go to the line for two free throws. 21-16. Shimon getting some extended minutes here. But might get uh, a bit of a breather with Dan Atkins set to check into the game. Stepping the line as far as 77% free throw shooter. First free throw is good. It's had double figures in all but one game this year. Had a season high 32 points. He's had 20 plus points twice this year. It's been really solid for him. Obviously a good Division I player at UVU or solid Division I player. Makes both free throws and it's 21-18. D. Evans Bank, big thanks to them for supporting Aggie Athletics. D. Evans Bank, a community bank with local employees helping their employees succeed. Atkin is going to get hit with a charge. Yep. Put his shoulder down. Good job by Farr in the right place at the right time. Created the contact. Gets knocked down. May not be right, but given this how it looked, officials are going to call that 90% of the time. Yeah, Odom's, Odom's going to argue that he didn't give him room to land, I think is what Odom's argument was. We didn't see the replay. Regardless, called it a charge. Taylor Miller as Westminster is just a three away from tying this game. Swing it back to Miller. Miller's got pump fakes the three, then drives, steps back, up under. What a move, and kisses it off the glass. He's got 13 on the night tonight. Ashworth's going to have to check back in. Utah State only leads by one. Taylor Miller, 13 on six of six from the field. Hamoda traveled with it. Yep. And here comes Westminster, folks, with a chance to take the lead with eight minutes left here in the first half. Shulga's going to check out. Ashworth's going to check in. And Westminster... Again, 8-19 left here in the half, trying to uh, create some discomfort yeah, here. Yeah, just sticking around, just sticking around. No Taylor Funk in this game, in case she's joining us for Utah State. And an offensive foul is going to go against Westminster. And Utah State will get the ball back. Just waiting for that big run. You know, you always kind of see those big runs come, and it just hasn't happened yet. Yeah, it, I feel like Utah State's just a little lackadaisical, a little, little light with the ball, you know, not as intense. Bearstow on the drive, and another foul is going to go a call against Westminster. That is the sixth team foul on the Griffins. Dowdell's going to check back into the game. Joe Heath, who was in for a moment, is going to check out. Bullhead City, Arizona ah, product. Yes. Saw you did your research on that one. Oh, yeah. Bearstow driving, kick it to Ashworth. Good look for three. The rainbow shot is missed, and the rebound foul is going to go against Utah State. Z Hamoda fighting with the with Drake Middleton for that, and that will be the 15th foul on Utah State, and that will bring us to our under eight timeout. It's a little ragged, a little rough, and Westminster's taking advantage of it. Utah State only leads by one over the Griffins. You're listening to Aggie basketball from Learfield. You can have live college sports in your hand this year with the brand new Varsity Network app. Hear live, play by play, and keep up with your favorite teams and audio broadcasts no matter where you are with this free new app. Be sure to download the Varsity Network app today. This March, you can listen to exclusive Westwood One coverage of the NCAA men's and women's basketball tournaments for free on the Varsity app. Powered by Learfield. Listen to every game at a truly unique listening experience. It's all free. Search NCAA Championships.
Welcome back. You're listening to Aggie basketball. Utah State leads by one over Westminster. Aggie's largest lead in this game has been nine, but it has been Taylor Miller who's put on a show. The cousin of Brock Miller has 13 points on six of six from the field, including making his only three-point shot attempt. And uh, he's given the Aggies some fits in this one as Again, Westminster just hanging in there with the Aggies. That's your Aggie scoring summary brought to you by your Utah pork producers, providing safe and wholesome pork products to Utah families for 25 years. Visit utahporkproducers.org. That timeout is uh, is the under eight minute timeout. You're going, you know, you got eight minutes till halftime and the coach looks around. Everyone's kind of calm and saying, let's go, let's go. And, and the coach just kind of calmly says, are you guys ready to start playing? Hey, hey. Are you, are you ready to start playing? Have you enjoyed these first 12 minutes of just doing nothing? Every, everyone is like, yeah, yeah, let's go. Okay, now let's see how they come out of this. Dowdell on the right wing, slings it up to Lewis Johnson and kicks it left to Middleton, trying to post up. Dowdell down low, gets away from Hamoda, takes the jumper and misses it, and a nice rebound by Idle Rock. Idle Rock's going to run things, gets outside the three-point line, cross court to Ashworth, pump fakes the three, driving into the lane, leaves it for Bearstow. Bearstow back to Ashworth. Ashworth. Works to the baseline, back to Idle Rock, cranking the three, misses it badly, and the rebound ripped down by Dowdell. I'd, I'd love to see a Dan Atkin post up. Slow yeah. it down, Atkins. throw it down to Dan. And he's asking for it too. Yeah, he is. Middleton comes around to screen, retreats, leaves it to Johnson, trying to post up far. Can he slip it to him? No, Hamoda does a good job, not allowing the entry pass. Back to Miller. Miller on the right wing, four, three, driving, and his pass to Middleton, that's going to be late. You're, are they going to count that? Woo, I thought that was a late shot, but Miller gets it, and it's the lead for Westminster, 22 to 21. Atkin driving, poked away, turnover Utah State. Taylor Miller puts his foot on the gas, leaves it for far as reverse layup missed, and the rebound will go back to Utah State. 22-21, Westminster leads by one. Taylor Miller now with 15 points, seven of seven from the field. RJ Idle Rock's gonna take a breather. Max Shulga checks in. Aggies out on the court right now. We got Bearstow, Ashworth, Hamoda, Akin, and Shulga. Let's see if he calls it. Let's see if he listens to you and calls Dan Akin in the post. Sean Bearstow spins in the lane, turn around, floater, yes. Got it to go. Aggies take the lead back, 23-22. They really do need to attack the paint and start to control the game from inside out. Lewis Johnson to Kataguchi. Swings it left. Dowdell will take the quick three and airball it. And kept, nope, not kept in play. Good job by Kataguchi to try to keep it in play to give it to Lewis Johnson, but he couldn't control the handle. Ball goes off his hands out of bounds. And the Aggies lead by one, 23-22 with the ball, trying to extend it. Ashworth to a trailing Bearstow. Bearstow to the elbow to Hamoda. Long three, yes. Z Hamoda buries the baseline three. He's got five on the night. And the Aggies on a bit of a run. Take the lead at 24-20 or 26-22. Nice wow. pass to Kataguchi who lays it up and in. Taylor Miller, a beautiful assist. And the lead is two, 26-24. Hamoda back to Ashworth. Long three, got it. Steve Oh, and he's going to get hit with a flopping. So Stephen Ashworth, the three will count. It's 29-24. Felt like he got knocked down and looked at the official, and they're going to say, nope, you flopped. And... It's going to send Dowdell to the line for a free throw. There was, there was some a little bit of contact. I talked to our good friend Sam Merrill, and he said, look, sometimes you're falling not to flop, but you're falling to make sure you don't land on someone's foot and yeah. get on their ankle. And that's the hard part with that rule. I don't think Steven was falling to try to get the call. But Kataguchi came up underneath him a little bit, and I think he was making sure that he wasn't going to land on someone's ankle. 29-25, a four-point lead for Utah State. Kataguchi 
Back to Dowdell. Tries to get around Hamoda. Spins right, spins left. Still in the lane. Aggies wanted a three-second call. Back to Miller. Step back. Takes the long two, and he will miss his first shot of the night, and Hamoda collects the rebound. He's now 7 of 8. Barstow in transition. Leaves it right to Ashworth. Ashworth, bounce pass in the paint to Barstow. Can't do anything with it. So he kicks it back to Ashworth. Behind the back dribble. Into the lane. Shot foul. No good, but he'll go to the line for a couple free throws. And I believe this will be, yep, Utah State's first trip to the line tonight. Leading by four, 29-25. Ashworth will have two free throws. First free throw is good. One more coming up. Lining up the second free throw, Stephen Ashworth. And gets it to go. Aggies largest lead in this game is nine. It's now six, 31-25. Ball on the court, deflected, and a steal. Bearstow in transition, leaves it back for Ashworth. Wide open three, yes, Stephen Ashworth. Left wing three. And Ashworth now in double digits with 11 points. And the Aggies match their largest lead of nine after the turnover and the three in transition. Dowdell coming around to screen. Gets to the free throw line. Tries to slip it to the cutter. Goes off his hands. Barr turns it over. And the Aggies lead by nine, 34-25. There's that run you were looking for. Timeout on the court. We'll go ahead and take it. We'll take a 30-second timeout. You're listening to Aggie Basketball from Learfield. left to go here in the first half. Aggies lead by 9, 34 to 25. Great effort here by Westminster. In particular, Taylor Miller has got 15 points. But Aggies now with two players in double figures. Stephen Ashworth with 11 and Sean Bairstow with 10. Rocky Mountain Dermatology offers Botox, skin cancer, acne, cool sculpting, and laser hair removal services in North Logan, providing you advanced dermatology and surgery right here in Cache Valley. Well, they came out of the timeout, under eight timeout. Took him a second, but uh, they made a little bit of a run. Got back, got the lead back to nine points, and now they're saying, okay, let's carry it on. A little similar to the LMU game. With, they were down 13? 13, yeah. About, Thir- about uh, I want to say, about this range, four or five minutes left. And then, and then they put it on them and ended up going into halftime. Were they up by? They were down three at the down half. Down three, not yep, up by yep. three. Yeah, down three. Ended the half on a 20 to seven run. Sean Lehigh and uh, Stephen Ashworth still barking with each other. The official that called the flop. Ashworth still not happy about it. Sean Bairstow working the right side up top to Akin. Akin leaves it for Shulga. Shulga weaves it to Ashworth. Ashworth now will drive, pull back to the elbow. Nice bounce pass to Akin who lost it. Got the hand. Uh, Got the cookie stolen out of the cookie jar on his way up there. Yeah, far stick his hunt out and got lucky. No foul and clean clean pick. Taylor Miller on the left wing. Swings it back up top. It's a Kurtz. Trey Kurtz into the game for the first time tonight. To Kataguchi. Then up top to number 21, Trey Farr. Takes the jumper. Kurtz from the elbow and knocks it down and cuts off Utah State's run. Aggies have made four out of the last five field goals. 
Turnover's a bit of an issue. They've turned it over five times here in the first half. Atkin back to Ashworth. Tries to use that screen. Gets into the baseline. Kicks it to Bearstow. Bearstow thought about the three. Instead takes the long two and knocks it down. 36-27. Nine point lead. Three minutes left in the first half. Great pull up 12 footer. A lot of guys who try to take that all the way to the hoop. But Sean just pulled up for 12. It's awesome. Dowdell on the right wing to Kataguchi. Works to the right side. Drives looking for Dowdell. Gets it to him. Thought about the three. Hamoda's there defensively. So he's got to slip it back to Kataguchi, who then gives it to Farr at the elbow. Farr lining up against Atkin. Tries to drive on him, lost the handle, and here comes Hamoto, comes away and steals it away. Z Hamoto running the point, driving down the court. There's your entry pass to Atkin. Atkin posting up against Farr. Let's see him go to work. Spins, takes the jumper, yes, and draws the foul. I, I believe that's a point or two in the paint. That, <laughs> I, I Honestly... And this is where college is different than pro. Let's see what they do here. I really feel like they could throw him the ball every single time yeah. and score until Westminster adjusts and starts doubling. And, uh, you know, this is where you'd say, okay, this isn't rocket scientists. We have a clear advantage with Dan d down low. Let's just keep attacking yeah. it and see how Westminster adjusts. Atkins free throw is a little short, and the rebound pulled down by Westminster. 38-27, first time tonight. Aggies have led by double digits. Trying to extend that going into halftime. Middleton to Kataguchi, back to Middleton. Swing it left to Kurtz. Now back to Miller, down low to Kurtz. Kurtz has got good positioning against Bearstow, but his layup attempt is badly missed. And Utah State in transition going the other way. Bearstow to a trailing Shulga. Drives, leaves it for Akin. Akin off the glass, yeah. yes! And there's another end one. There you go, points in the It's like you paint. know something about the gamer. I, I, I've watched it a little bit. 40 to 27, Atkin back-to-back -back buckets, back-to-back -back and ones, missed the first and one opportunity. Let's see if he can knock this down. Is he gonna make this one? He'll make this one. Okay. Atkin, here comes the free throw. Don't let me down, Dan. It is up and it is uh, no good. But the rebound pulled down by Shulga Lane violation is going to go against Westminster, so Atkins going to get another shot at this. Really, Scott gets another shot at this. <laughs> <laughs> actually, Westminster actually worked well because Shulga got the rebound and got the putback. Now and Shulga's another lane violation. This time's on Shulga. So, and by the way, Atkin made that one. Yeah, so he did. You're, you're right. Shulga's wrong. Taylor Miller. Gonna, as the Aggies bring a little bit of press, Kurtz, Kataguchi back to Miller. Miller crossing the timeline, picked up by Shulga. Tries to drive baseline and can't get it to go. Rebound attempt, missed, still tipped around. Miller's able to come away with it. Taylor Miller has got 15 points on seven of nine shooting. That's only the second missed shot by Miller here in the first half. Kataguchi leaves it to Kurtz. Kurtz trying to drive, likes the mismatch, but can't take advantage of it. Leaves it for Oliveira, then back to Middleton. His shot is blocked at the rim, and it's going to go against Akin. And for Akin, that'll be foul number two. Aggies on a 6-0 run, lead by 13, 40 to 27. 126 left in the half. And Middleton goes to the line as he is a uh, not a particularly good free throw shooter, 7 of 16 on the season from the charity stripe. Byproduct of El Dorado, California. Do you play any JC ball? Not that I know of. Yes. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Be thinking. Slick. There you go. Oh, you set me up for that, Scotty. I, I apologize. You teed that up perfectly. Kyle Taylor would be so disappointed in me. Kyle Taylor doing great work down there at Slick. Former Aggie assistant. You were on the staff with him here at Utah State. Kyle's doing a great job. Another Aggie who's doing a great job, Kevin Dustin, the coach who yes. recruited me on Larry U. Stacey's staff is the AD, doing a heck of a job down there. So both free throws are made. And Westminster coming on with the full court press. Ashworth handing it nicely. And they're going to, oh, never mind. Say so he carried it. Yeah, he carried it. Not quite in the NBA yet. 
40 to 29. That's the sixth turnover for Utah State. Six turnovers for Westminster as well. And Westminster will have a chance to cut this to single digits. I'd say that'd be a win considering how this game was going just a couple minutes ago. Absolutely. Taylor Miller working the right side. Leaves it for Middleton. Middleton to the elbow. Driving. Cut off by Idle Rock. He shot off the glass. No good. Atkin pulls down the rebound. Quickly to Ashworth. Ashworth gives it to a trailing Atkin. Atkin then to RJ. He'll take the three and miss the three. And the rebound ripped down by Middleton. Very, very rare for Steven to miss someone in transition, but Sean was calling for the alley-oop on the far side. Steven couldn't see it with the traffic in there. 40 to 29. Middleton back to Miller. Miller guarded by Shulga. Drives around him. Reverse layup. Yes. Hung on the rim. Shulga's upset with himself. Miller's got 17 points. Uh oh. And who is that? That's Atkin. And Atkin's hurt. Comes up holding his, uh, may have drawn a little blood there, but he gets up and says, I'm all right. Took a hit to the head with 36 seconds left, and the lead is nine. Largest lead for Utah State's been 13 in this game, as they just can't seem to run away and hide from the Griffins of Westminster. Here comes the press once again. Ashworth back er, to Bearstow to Shulga. Shulga. Up top to Ashworth. About a five second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. 15 seconds on that shot clock. Ashworth still hammering the dribble. Get to 10 to Bearstow. Bearstow turnaround jumper, no good. Not a great shot by Sean. And here comes Westminster trying to hold for the final shot. Taylor Miller comes around to screen. Oh, offensive foul, good job. They're gonna get hit, uh, Oliveira with the screen, illegal screen, so Utah State will have the final shot. 4.4 seconds left. I always like to see how teams execute this. They've got something drawn up for four seconds. Stevens in the far corner. Watch, watch the action here. Inbound will come to Shulga. Shulga with three, Shulga with two. Takes the long three and bakes it in! Oh, Max Shulga from the logo at the buzzer. Aggies lead by 12, 43-31. It's a great drawn up play. Uh, they, they got lucky. They were running the hammer play for Steven running the baseline, but Max just took two dribbles, send it off, and uh, yeah, great, great half court shot by Shulga. Aggies lead by 12 at the break, 43-31. Halftime next, you're listening to Aggie, uh, you'll, you'll listen to Aggie basketball from Learfield down low be patient oh. back to Ashworth and Ashworth draws a foul does a good job as he got Pierce Sterling out of position and fought through him to create the contact they they run the old jazz play John Stockton screens for Carl Malone Stephen was st screening for Akin um, but Shulga wasn't patient enough Bearstow to Dorius back to Bearstow Bearstow alley-oop to Dorius he throws it down with two hands Aggies up 45-31 can we get a notorious? No? Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, Middleton looking for Miller. Then finally is able to hand off to Avilia. Comes around a screen. Driving off the glass. Got it to go. Buckets for both teams to start this second half. Aggies up 45-33. Ball nearly stolen away. Out of bounds. It'll stay with Utah State. Taylor Miller trying to cut the route and get the interception forces it out of bounds I think we're going to see the exact same play let's see if Scholl well I don't know they're not lining up like they are now but they initially we're going to run the same play for the cross screen for Dan 45 33 12 point lead Sean Barristow gets a screen from Dorius works it right to Ashworth for three yes no doubt Ashworth saying I got fouled on that one we're going to call that or do I have to get a flop Middleton on the right side, leaves it back up top to Farr. Bad pass, goes out of bounds off of Farr. Turnover as Utah State has their largest lead of 15. Sean Lee and Stephen Ashworth still talking to each other. Both are smiling, but Stephen's trying to get his point across. Shulga on the right wing. You talk to officials out there like that? No. 
I don't believe that. She'll get to the baseline, leaves it for Dorius, but the ball tipped away on the pass, still on the court, and it'll be what? Well, that was a quick tie-up. I don't think we were quite there yet, but it'll go back to Westminster. Good hustle by Trevin. I love to see him get on the floor. Don't bend over and, and try to pick it up. Go dive forward, and he, he did that. 15-point lead for the Aggies against the pesky Griffins of Westminster. Dowdell into the game to Middleton. Leaves it to Farr, back to Miller. Miller off the glass, got it to go. Great finish. Great action, too. Inbound to Ashworth. Who got knocked down. Aggies only lead by 13, and Miller's got 19 on the game of 9-11 from the field. Shulga cross-court to Ashworth. Gets a screen from Dorius, launches the three. Looks good, it is good. Steven Ashworth now has got 17 points on the night tonight. Five of seven from the three-point line. Driving once again is Avelia. Has to get rid of it. Hands it up top to Miller. Then to Farr, who's been kept relatively in check in this game. Dowdell gives it back to Miller. Ashworth's got a hand in his face. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Into the lane, rises, takes the long jumper, and knocks it down from about 12 feet out. This is fun to watch these two go at each other. Yep. Taylor Miller's now got 21 points on the night tonight. 10 of 12 from the field. Ashworth, pass nearly stolen away to Dorius, hands it to Shulga. Shulga drives around his man and is fouled on the drive. 17.09 left here in the ball game, and the Aggies up by 14, 51-37. So for those of us that have never played at this level that don't know what it's like, when you're in a zone like that, like Miller, it's got to feel good. Like that basket feels five feet wide. Yeah, you're exactly right. Everything's going up. Uh, and, and feels like it's going to go in, and and you really want to get the ball every single time. Pass to Dorius. Dorius can't finish at the rim, but he is fouled on the inbound, and Dorius is going to go to the line for a couple free throws. Aggies up by 14. Largest lead for Utah State in this game has been 16. As Dorius goes to the line for his first free throw attempt of the night tonight. What, what can be equally as fun is Steven, you can tell, hit a couple threes just now. Taylor is, is playing well, and to have this guard matchup going back and forth, the two very good guards. Dorius makes the first free throw. One more coming up for Trevin, and it is short, but the rebound brought down by Bearstow. Leaves it for Shulga. He'll take the three. No good. And the rebound, I think they're going to get Akin with the foul, and if so, that's going to be his third. Actually, it's his second, excuse me. It's only two fouls on Atkin. 15-point lead for Utah State, 52-37, to 37, as Dorius splits those free throws. And here comes Taylor Miller, trying to cook a bit on Ashworth, then gives it back left. Dowdell now with the ball. Pump fakes, gives it to Kurtz, and then to Avilia. Crossover, drive, elbow, jumper, yes. As Westminster filling it here in the second half, they have yet to miss a shot here in the second half. They're four for four. Ashworth takes the three, misses the three, and out of bounds off the miss. It'll go back to Westminster with Utah State leading by 13, 52 to 39. Feels like these next like five minutes are going to be really important, whether it stays like a 9 to 12 point game or if Utah State can push it to 20. Yeah, I, I agree with you and I don't want to sound like a broken record, but get the ball in the paint. Dowdell gets the ball across the timeline, has a lane, leaves it to his big man and he lost the handle. Number 32, Oliveric unable to pull it down. Shulga looks at the three and his bounce pass down low but draws the foul. Gabriel Oliveira Gets hit with another foul. And Utah State, that'll be their fourth team foul already for Westminster. And we're just nearly four minutes into the first, second half. Bearstow leaves it for Dorius. Back to Bearstow on the left baseline. Three-point line extended. Up top to Shulga. 18 seconds on the shot clock. Shulga. Bounce pass to Akin. Can't finish, but is fouled on the dunk. And it would have brought the house down had he been able to get that one. Oliveira gets another foul. That's his fourth. 
and he'll probably be done for a bit. 13 point lead for Utah State, 52-39. Free throws coming up for Dan Akin when we come back on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield. College sports fans now have access to hundreds of weekly podcasts that zero in on the college sports world. Now available in the Varsity Podcast Network and part of the new Varsity app. The app is free. Download from the App Store and listen today. Fifty-two to thirty-nine, Utah State leads, but only by thirteen over Westminster. This game is Utah State can't seem to separate by much. Dan Atkins is going to go to the line for free throws. Did you know seventy-four percent of Utahns get prescriptions from a friend or family member? We all have a role to play in prescription safety. To learn more, visit knowyourscript.org. Atkins makes the free throw. He'll have one more coming up. Trying to push this lead out a bit for Utah State. Second free throw by Akin. Good rotation, knocks it down. Ag Aggie still with their starting lineup. Remember, no Taylor Funk in this game. Suffered an ankle sprain earlier in the week in practice. As Westminster brings the ball down the court with some pressure. Taylor Miller still able to work to the right side. Not sure how long Funk's going to be out. Hope to get him back by Hawaii. Middleton lays it up after a nice pass by Miller. And it's 54-41. That's where Trev's got to come and clean that up. That's got to be his role. Westminster, five for five from the field here in the second half. Have yet to miss a shot. Shulga drives, leaves it for Dorius. Kiss off the glass, gets it to go. Great finish by Trev. Good things happen when you get it in the, in the paint. In the paint. Middleton to Miller. Miller comes around a screen. Up against Dorius, likes that matchup. Swings it left, and the ball deflected out of bounds. It'll stay with Westminster. Lewis Johnson, number 13, checks into the game. Middleton takes a breather for the Griffins. And he will inbound to Miller. Miller on the left wing against Ashworth. Double teamed and steps on the line, out of bounds. Good job by Trevin Dorius on the double team. And Miller forced to step on the line. Yeah, that's not easy, and Trev did a great job on the ball screen. You heard Dixon, uh, one of the assistant coaches, calling blue. Trev got up, and Steven forced him down to the baseline. Did a good job. Bearstow driving, spinning, and traveling. Yep. So Utah State on the turnover gives the ball right back. It's interesting, you know, Utah State, their largest lead has been 16, right now they're at 15. It just seems to be hovering there. And neither team, Westminster can't seem to pull it back to single digits, but Utah State can't seem to push it to 20 plus. Yep. Offensive foul on an illegal screen, so back to back to back turnovers. And Utah State will inbound on the far sideline. Aggies in their all black uniforms. There's a lot of Aggie fans that have a little bit of issue. Both the football and basketball team have really struggled when they go all black. And if Utah State somehow loses this game, there's going to need to be a bonfire with some of those black uniforms. Yeah, you'll never see him again. Steven Ashworth leaves it for Shulga, driving, kicks it to Akin, tries to finish at the rim, and he wow. does. Wants the foul, doesn't get it, but he does get the bucket. Aggies up by 17, 58-41. What an impressive play. 
Yeah, that was a great finish. Actually, really good defender defense by the Westminster guy. Kataguchi, as they try to post up far, and they're going to get a foul on Trevin Dorius trying to guard the uh, the entry pass. I don't know about this one. Taylor Miller's playing the game of his life. He's going to check out. They are now. Here's the thing about Westminster. They are playing a back end of a back to back. They did play last night in Salt Lake City. Who'd they play against? Do you uh, remember? It was SAGU American Indian College. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Pass or shot missed by far, and here comes Stephen Ashworth crossover driving double teamed in the paint leaves it for Bear Snow who throws down the two handed dunk. Great. What an assist. Yeah, a great job of just attracting two and then Steven patiently waiting for Bearstow to get open. Johnson to Farr, who, again, Farr's their leading scorer at 18 points a game. He's been kept in check in this one with only two. Long two is up. Nope, it's a three. 60 to 44. As Kataguchi is able to get the three. I would really like to see them post up, Dan. Bearstow to Hamoda. Hamoda. Crossing over, then gets it back to Ashworth. Ashworth then swings it right to Bearstow. Bearstow driving, his floater with the right hand missed. And here comes Westminster. Pierce Sterling, by the way, check back into the game. Driving, layup, no good. Rebound, ripped down by Bearstow. Quick outlet to Shulga. Aggies don't have numbers. Shulga doesn't care. Driving, shows, kicks it right. Hamoda for three. Yes, sir. Z Hamoda. Aggies back up by 19, 63-44. 12.47 and counting left here in the second half. Aggies up by 19 against a Westminster team that does not want to go away. And a screen. What do we got, a legal screen? Ball's going back to Utah State. I don't know if it's a turn. He called an illegal screen on the ball handler. That's a first. I, that's why I'm trying to figure out where I the have, illegal screen happened. I have never seen an illegal screen. I think the ref was anticipating a handoff because he turned his body into him, but he was still the ball handler. That was... Norm Parrish is not pleased, and he may have good reason to be upset about that one. Shulga to R.J. Idlerock, who just checked into the game. Trying to give a breather for Ashworth. Shulga driving and caught up in traffic and tries to force it out, and they'll just say a pass out of bounds. After that illegal screen, I think the I think Westminster could have tomahawk chopped a guy and not gotten a call. Yeah, I think, I think there's a makeup call there. No harm, no foul. Aggies up by 19, 63-44, 12-20 left here in the ballgame. Pierce Sterling. Works the left side of the court, picked up by Shulga. Trying to post up Farr, but Trevin Dorius is doing a good job not allowing it to happen. Finally, Farr is able to collect. Puts his shoulder down. Hamoda comes over to help, pokes it away. Joe Heat's able to recollect by Westminster. Five seconds. Sterling. Three, two, finally a long three. Right wing, no good. Rebound pulled down by Shulga. And Ryan Odom says, let's go. Aggies trying to get their first 20-point lead in this game. Z Hamoda. Still dribbling, leaves it for Idle Rock to Akin. Post him up. Please give it to him. And they do not. Hamoda driving. Hamoda in the lane. Stops. Nearly travels, but lays it up and in. And there's your 21 point lead. Utah State leads 65 to 44. Aggies have made five out of the last six field goals. Far. Hands back to Kataguchi. Trying to cook a little bit on Atkin. Finally has to give it to the right side. Leaves it back for Middleton. Middleton on the right wing. Up top to Sterling. Aggie's doing a good job defensively on this possession. Sterling can't do anything with it. Finally leaves it for Johnson and the ball stolen away. RJ Idlerock, layup, yes, and the foul. RJ Idlerock driving, drawing the foul, getting the bucket, and he'll get the end one opportunity. And now the Aggies starting to flex on a 13-3 run, 7-0 run. They forced four turnovers over the last three minutes, and the Aggies start to take control of this game. 67-44, you're listening to Aggie basketball from Learfield.
67-44, Aggies with their largest lead in this game of 23. Hey, nothing beats the power and excitement of live events like Ticket Smarter. For all the best sports, concerts, and theater events, visit TicketSmarter.com or on the app, Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. All right, Utah State now with one, two, three, four players in double figures. Ashworth with 17, Bearstow with 14, Atkin with 10, Hamoda now in double figures with 10. And Utah State shooting a cool 50% from three, 12 of 24. Game's a, game's a lot easier when you yeah. shoot like that, and, and Utah State shot, shot a lot like that uh, this season. So Shows you how well they shot the ball from three to start the season. They've had two subpar three-point shooting games in back-to-back -back south against uh, San Francisco and LMU, and they're still the number one three-point shooting team percentage-wise in the country. Yeah, unbelievable. All right, Idle Rock with his first bucket. Chance to get the old-fashioned three-point play. Free throw, no good. By the way, for R.J. Idlerock, I believe, yep, that was his first free throw attempt of the season. Shot 81% last year. Good free throw shooter. Just hasn't had a chance this year in the first nine games of the year. Trying to slip it to Miller. Finally, Farr is able to help. And then back to Pierce Sterling. And the pass intended for Kamaguchi goes out of bounds, and it'll go back to Utah State. It's starting to get, come off the rails a little bit. Yeah, here well, I'll say this. You see Coach Odom getting a little closer to half court. You can tell he's getting on him defensively. Z and Shulga specifically are getting in there, guys, causing a lot of pressure. RJ Rock on the right wing. Gets a screen from Shimon Zapala, then finally gives it up to Hamoda. Hamoda to Shulga. Shulga gets to the baseline. Driving, driving, reverse layup, up. Good. What a beautiful shot. And Max Shulga now in double figures with 11 points. Now five Utah State players in double figures. And the Aggies up by 25, 69-44. Farr on the block against Zapala. Tries to go around him. Can't get the bucket to go, but Shimon's going to pick up another foul. And that will be his third of the game. Got to be quicker with the feet, right? Yeah, you got to just slide your feet over. I, I don't know if that was really a foul. It, he, he did get him with the lower body. Farr did a good job of getting into him. But, yeah, Shimon's just got to separate and move his feet a little more. Utah State shooting 57% from the field, holding Westminster to 49%. Still a really good shooting night. Westminster came into this game averaging 46% from the field. Farr, free throw is good. Yeah, if this trend continues, I mean, that's what the coaches are going to look at and – you're going to say, hey, a win's a win, we'll take a win. But, you know, Westminster shouldn't shoot 50% from the field and 60% from, uh, from three. Second three throw, or free throw by far is up and good. He's averaged 18, nearly 19 points a game. He's got four tonight, and all four have come from the free throw line. He's yet to make a field goal. Far, tremendous player, just hasn't clicked for him tonight. Ack into the elbow, leaves it for Shulga, swings it right to Idle Rock. Cranks the three and buries the three. R.J. Idlerock, his best game of the season, and Utah State leads 72-46. to Idlerock was two of seven from three, and a block shot at the rim. Taylor Miller block. Aggies three on one fast break, and they can't collect and turn it over. Pierce Sterling and others able to come back. Taylor Miller trying to drive. Leaves it right. Lewis Johnson for three. No good. And Zapala rips down the rebound, outlets it to Shulga. 72-46, and another bad pass. Shulga trying to slip it to Idle Rock, and Idle Rock, as Shulga comes up and goes, yeah, that's my bad. A little too careless. Slaps his chest, goes, yep. <laughs> yeah, just unnecessary, and there's a few things. Sometimes Max gets a little fancy with it. Yeah. Pierce Sterling working right to left, up top to Lewis Johnson. Swings it left to Sterling, guarded by Stephen Ashworth. And a quick foul is going to be called on Ashworth. Nope, actually a hold, and that's on Zapala, and that's four on Shimon. Getting his money's worth of his fouls tonight. Yep. So I do like that. Make him count. Yep. So Dorius is going to check in. Shimon's upset, though. You're thinking, hey, this is a game I get minutes. Yeah. And But... You got to be smarter than that, obviously. Atkins going to take a breather as well. Bearstow's going to check in. 
So here comes Westminster. Down by 26. 72-46. Middleton swings it cross court to Miller. His layup good and he draws the foul. He's not quitting. He's got 23 on the night and with a chance to make it 24. And as aggressive as he's been tonight, that'll be his first free throw attempt coming up here. I thought Sean was straight up. A to A is what they call it. You, you, you land where you take off. It looked like he did, so I'm not sure where the, where the foul was. But Here comes the free throw from Miller and knocks it down. He's, he's got, got 24 on the night, 11 of 14. He's got a rainbow, doesn't he? He does. Steven Ashworth leaves it for Bearstow. Rotates right, then back to Hamoda. Cross court back to Ashworth. Doria sets the screen. Ashworth still behind the three-point line to Hamoda. Cranks an early three and knocks it down. Z Hamoda's got 13 on the night tonight. Aggies up 75-49. Taylor. Fighting as Amoda fights through the screen. Miller still shoots it over the top of him and knocks it down. Wow. 75-51. 24-point lead for the Aggies. Miller's got 26. Hamoda will take another baseline three. Looks good, it is good. Z Hamoda putting on a show. He's got 16 points, including four of five from the three-point line. 78-51. Tyler Kurtz, number 22, trying to get it to Miller. Bad pass, stolen away. Hamoda all by himself. Showtime. 360 dunk. He comes back smiling. Why not? It's his night. Utah State leads by 29. Miller trying to get it to Farr on the entry pass. Puts the shot up, missed, but he draws the foul against Trevin Dorius. And that'll bring us to our under eight timeout with Utah State leading 80-51 to against Westminster. This is Aggie basketball from Learfield. Can't choose between watching your favorite Mountain West team on TV or going everywhere else you need to be? With the official Mountain West app, you don't have to. Watch hundreds of Mountain West games and championship events live or archived from wherever you are, all for free with the Mountain West app. Available on mobile and connected TV devices. Download the Mountain West app today. Fifty-one. We're just talking about Zia Moda during the break and, and what the ceiling could be for him if he's able to really continue to shoot it like he has tonight long term. Yeah, he, he obviously, we, we've sung his praises this year of what he can do on the defensive end, his length, his athleticism, um, his feel on the defense, and he's had a couple really good plays defensively tonight. But that's really what separates, you know, a good college player and a pro is a guy that has that but then can also – you call it a three and D guy, is that he can hit the three and he can play defense. And if he can do that, you know, he, he'll get paid to play basketball at some level. Aggies lead by 29. Your scoring summary brought to you by your Utah pork producers. From the farm to the fork, Utah pork producers committed to providing nutritious pork products to Aggie fans and families across the state. Go to utahporkproducers.org. All right, Farr is going to go to the free throw line. Has not made a field goal yet in this game. Averaging 18 a game, but he's looking for points five and six from the free throw line. First free throw by far is up and good. Remember, tax reform laws impact all tax returns each year. Taxes can be confusing. HR Block has 60 years of experience dealing with those taxes. Information is available at hrblock.com. Remember, HR Block of Logan owned and operated by proud Aggie alumni. Far goes two for two from the line. Utah State's lead is 27, 80 to 53. Inbound, Ashworth to Bearstow. 
you'd like to clear your bench, but Utah State just doesn't have a lot of a lot of depth right now. No. With Rylan Jones and Taylor Funk out of this game. Ashworth back to Bearstow. Bearstow gets to the elbow, then retreats. Crosses over. Spins. Takes the fallaway jumper and knocks it down. Aggies have made their last nine field goals in this game. Here's the thing. You got Westminster who's 8 of 13 from the field here in the second half, and yet Utah State nearly leads by 30 and has really pushed that lead out here in the second half. Yeah, you're looking at Utah State. They've got they've got 10 more shot attempts, uh, and that's by rebounding and turnovers as well. I think, you know, looking at the points off turnovers, they've got 20. Um, they've really taken advantage, especially in the last few minutes of some of those turnovers leading to baskets. Kick ball, gives the ball back to Westminster with 20 seconds on the shot clock. Out of the nine games Utah State's played this year, this is now the seventh of those nine in which Utah State has scored 80 points or more. Inbound pass stolen away by Z Hamoda. That's now the 17th turnover. Another three, Idle Rock from the baseline, knocks it down. Aggies starting to really pull away at this point, 85 to 53. Yeah, two big games. I mean, Idle Rock's played really well, and uh, and Z, two guys shooting it from the three-point line. Middleton leaves it up top to Sterling. Pierce Sterling looking from a screen. Aggies, though, bring the double team. Turnaround jumper by Kurtz is up and good, and they'll give him a three on that one. How many threes has he attempted? That's only his third three-point shot attempt of the season. He's now two of three. Ashworth will try to get that three right back off the back of the iron on the straightaway three. Tipped out by Dorius, but controlled by Westminster. Taylor Miller, he'll take a three in transition off the bounce and miss it. I know we haven't said that a lot tonight. 85-56. Sean Bearstow driving, leaves it down low to Dorius. His shot off the glass, got it to go. Good job, good body control there in the low block. Aggies up 87-56. Yeah, great pass by Sean and really good finish by Trevin. 22nd assist on the night on 33 made field goals. And another steal by Z Hamoda. All by himself. Throws down the two-handed dunk. Z Hamoda has just been a thief in the night for Utah State. Three and D. We gotta see how many steals. That's the fourth steal of the night and 20 points for Z Hamoda. We'll take a quick 30 second coach's timeout. Utah State up 89-56 on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield. Fifty-six Utah State run away and hiding in a game that, frankly, for most of this game, didn't feel like a 33-point lead. No, it wasn't a 33-point lead. I mean, Westminster kept it interesting in the first half, and then it kind of hovered between 9 and 13 points, and then come the 10-minute mark or so, maybe 12-minute mark, Utah State just pulled away, and, and defensively, you saw Coach Odom get a little more intense, Max and Z and Idle Rock actually in the game when when they start making the run, getting some steals, leading to easy baskets. Points in the paint. Yep. 25 points off of 17 Westminster turnovers. Uh, Westminster only had seven turnovers of the half. They turned it over 10 here in the second half, and Utah State has really feasted. Z Hamoda with four steals and it feels like he's gotten dunks on every time he's stolen the ball. Yeah, that, and that's exactly what it's been. It's their defense leading to offense, and uh, great to see that happen, that they can turn that on. Comes down to, hey, okay, guys, wake up, let's play, let's put this away, and, and obviously Utah State, the superior team, more talented team, able to do that when they, when they put their mind to it. Bank of Utah and Utah State Athletics teaming up this basketball season to donate for Hoops for Hope. Every point the Aggies score at home, 
Bank of Utah will donate $1 to Hoops for Hope. Thank you to Bank of Utah for supporting the Aggies. All right, here comes Pierce Sterling working the left side. Bear stows on him, kicks it over to number 12, Drake Middleton, then to Kurtz, who just hit a three. Olivero now with the ball, back to Middleton, caught up. Needs to find somewhere to go. Instead, he'll just take the shot and miss it. But the ball tipped out and finally controlled by Westminster on the offensive rebound. Driving is Sterling. His shot blocked. Shimon Zapala with the block shot. Ziamota comes away with it. Cross court. Back to Isle Rock. And he hit another three. You bet he can. RJ Isle Rock. Double figures for the first time this year. 11 points. Four of seven from the field. Three of six from three. And the Aggies on the night tonight, 17 of 30 from on the three-point line. Desperation shot, missed, and the rebound fought for, and Ashworth's going to come away with the rebound. Ashworth has got three rebounds, five assists to go along with his 17 points. Shot missed, rebound controlled by Westminster, 92 to 56. Kataguchi leaves it back to Sterling. Sterling on the left wing. Cross-court pass to Middleton. And here comes the bench for Utah State. Middleton back to Kurtz. He'll take another straightaway shot. Miss, and the rebound brought down by Hamoda. Z Hamoda's line tonight, 20 points, four rebounds, three assists. And another three, yes! Check that, 23 points on eight of 10 and five of six from the three-point line. 95 to 56 for Utah State. And they're putting a lot of points on the board. Kataguchi swings it back to Middleton. Middleton then leaves it right to Kurtz. To the elbow, back to Middleton, takes the long two and nestles it home. 95 to 58. Aggies with a 37 point lead. This is where you want to see a dead ball so that yep. these guys, the bench, can get in. Steven Ashworth to Bearstow. He wants to get in on the party. Misses the three, and the rebound pulled down by Westminster. Kataguchi and Steven Ashworth with an intentional foul to get some guys in the game. And coming in for the second time this year, Landon Brenchley, number zero from Ridgeline High School. The six foot four, 250 pound freshman, as well as Connor Gillis, number 13. The six foot two, 150 pound junior. Timeout on the court. We'll take it. It's our under four timeout. You're listening to Aggie basketball from Learfield. Your one stop for all college sports is the brand new Varsity Network website, thevarsitynetwork.com. Keep up with your favorite teams and the rest of college sports no matter where you are with thevarsitynetwork.com. Be sure to check out the Varsity Network website. Utah State's going to win their ninth game and match the best start in Utah State history. Coming into the game, Connor Gillis, Landon Brenchley. Let's get to know these young men. Landon Brenchley from Ridgeline High School. His senior year, average no big deal, 24 points, eight and a half rebounds and five assists a game. Yeah, Landon, uh, I also... uh Second year home from his mission, I think, to uh, serve a mission up in Canada, Toronto mission, I think. But uh, he's uh, had a good high school career, came as a preferred walk-on to Utah State, and I know all the guys really like him. You'll see, you know, if he gets in, able to take some shots, you'll see the bench go crazy because yeah. they like to see that. Same with Connor Gillis, by the way. Uh, both these guys saw one minute of time against Santa Clara. They're going to give it a little bit more extended time in this one. Free throw is up and good by Kataguchi. 
Aggies has got uh, Westminster in the bonus. One more free throw coming up. And good. Kataguchi knocks both down. So your Aggies on the court, RJ Idlerock, Z Hamoda, Shimon Zapala, Landon Branchley, and Connor Gillis. Idlerock in double figures. Leaves it to Hamoda. Hamoda back to Zapala. Struggled with the pass, but is fouled. And I believe that will be, yep, the 19th foul on Westminster. So Shimon Zapala is going to have free throws. Has only shot two free throws on the season in his two games prior. He's one of two from the line. Scott, tell us, is he going to make this one? Uh, I'm going to say yes. Okay. Free throw on the front end of the one and one. No, back iron. And Connor Gillis gets his hand in the cookie jar, and he's going to get hit with the foul, and that'll send Westminster to the line for a one and one. Ever the optimist, Scott. Ever the optimist you are. All right, stepping up to the line for the front end of a one and one is Lewis Johnson. Three of eight from the line this year. Not a lot of free throw attempts. His first one is good, though. As Westminster now a perfect 13 of 13 from the free throw line. Fun. 95 to 61 is our score. Fun to see Johnson, the Centerville kid. A lot of Utah kids on this yep. Westminster team. Both free throws are good from Lewis Johnson. Started his career at UVU, then slipped over to Slick, and now is with Westminster. RJ either rocked as Apollo, then to Hamoda. Hamoda trying to fight through a screen. Can't do it. Lewis Johnson's going to get hit with a foul, and I think that might be, let's see, nope, his fourth foul. Newmont kid, I believe. Lewis Johnson. Okay. Uh, famous Viewmont alum. Who do you got? I got nothing. Come on. He's what? your neighbor, Alex Jensen. Oh, there you go. Z, first free throw, good. Another another one, Jackson Vromont, Roman. I don't know if you remember him. The Sausage King of Chicago? No, Jackson. <laughs> Jackson Broman, professional basketball player. I know. No. You don't watch Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Do you want to know what? I'm so ashamed of myself Don't right say it. Now. No, don't you dare say it. First free throw good by Z. Second one missed. Goes out of bounds. This is where some of the senior statesmen need to make sure the offense is run so Connor and Landon can get a shot. Lewis Johnson swings it right. Joe Heath into the game. Hands back to Katakuchi. And working around the horn he tried to get up the three couldn't do it entry pass down to lewis johnson spins right hook shot up no good rebound ripped down by landon branchley his first rebound of the season in his aggie career leaves it for ida rock pump fakes the three steps to the side shoots the three and knocks down the three 99 62 aggies up by 37. westminster's played this will be the third team from Utah that they have played. Lost a game to Utah, 93 to 58, and then lost to BYU 100 to 70. Lewis Johnson fouled at the rim. And a couple more free throws coming up for the Griffins. Lewis Johnson has two free throws coming up as Westminster will empty their bench a little bit. 120 left to go in the game. Only question now, Spencer, is will the Aggies hit the century mark? It's a big question, 100. Hey, I've, I've talked to a couple coaches uh, around, around the Mountain West, and they've been amazed at how easy Utah State has scored the basketball. It is, now, I understand it's Westminster, but there's been a lot of nights yeah. To be averaging, over, I mean, 80-plus points a night, be able to get to 100 even against Westminster, not yeah. easy. Aggies averaging 86 a night. Yeah, that's that's not easy at all. And I would imagine in league that will come down a little bit, but still, that's really impressive offense. Lewis Johnson misses the second free throw, and Westminster able to recollect. Johnson now has it on a long three and got it, got it to go. So a nice little four-point trip down the court for Lewis Johnson. 99 to 66. Aggies lead by 33. 
Connor Gillis behind the back, dribble, his shot blocked at the rim. And quickly to Kataguchi who will throw, lay it up and get it to go in transition. 99-68, 31 point lead. As now the question is, can Utah State get to 100? By the way, that was Connor Gillis' first attempt of the season. His one made bucket came last year in Santa Clara, or in, uh, in the Myrtle Beach Classic where he made a field goal against New Mexico State. RJ Idle Rock to Zapala. Straight away three. Oh, I was going to say get in there. Five for the rebound. He gets back to Hamoda. Hamoda straight away three. Fouled, and he makes it. Z Hamoda gets the bucket, gets the end one. And the Aggies have broken 100, 102-68, with 39 seconds left to go in the game. Amoda with 27, 28, makes the free throw. 103-68. Aggies lead by 35. Kataguchi works the left wing. Crossover dribble, looking down low. Back up top, long straightaway three, no good. Rebound, fought for, brought down by Brenchley, and that'll do it. Aggies will run out the clock, and the Aggies will get their ninth win of the season. There's your winning team, losing team champ. Aggies are 20 of 36 from three tonight, 